So I've been making these key rings, which are an embroidery stitch file. And it then occurred to me that we could just make these just as easy with our scan and cut machines. So in the video, I'm going to show you how to create them. I'm using a varsity style font. Now, I, I think there might be one in Canvas Workspace Online, but I can't remember. But I'm going to be using one that's installed on my computer. So for the video i will be using canvas workspace the download version i.e the version that you can use on your desktop and i'm going to show you how to create these these were cut from vinyl or faux leather some people call it and they've got glitter heat transfer vinyl on the front so i'll show you how to make the basic shape and how to create the inlay and how to put a tab on so that i've put a key fob on these but you could punch a hole and use an eyelet and do them that way. But in the video, I show you how to add a piece on so that you can fit your one inch key fob hardware. They are double sided and um, they're really easy to put together. Now, when this video comes out, this video will already be on my YouTube channel. And this is a cutting file that I sell in my Scan and Cut cutting file shop. In, in this particular video, I show you how I, you know, assembled the glitter vinyl onto the base vinyl and how I put it all together. Basically, you're gluing them, but I give you some hint, hints and tips. So if you, um, these would make, you know, great personalised gifts you know, thinking a, a little bit forward towards Christmas. So they'd make great gifts for maybe your, your children's school teachers or just for family and friends or anybody really. So as I say, in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to create your own individual files. And I've just realized that's an abbreviation of my name. That that wasn't meant to be, these were just, um, these are for three different people. So I've made mine in black vinyl, as I say, and then I've put glitter heat transfer vinyl on the top. And then I've just added a little tassel dangle, which will probably be linked in my Amazon favorites. The, the size of these, again, you know, is entirely up to you how you make them. The stitched version, this was a stitch file I bought, these are only about two and a half in inches high, the actual fabric element. But the ones I've done in canvas are nearly three inches high. But again, you could make them smaller, you can make them bigger. It's entirely up to you. They're great, not just for being a key ring, but they're great for like hanging on to your, your luggage. So like my daughter travels a lot, I've made her one and it's on a golf bag so that, you know, when she's away at a tournament and everybody's got you know the same golf bag she can identify hers because she's got her initial hanging off it they're great for like your children's school bags if your children are in any kind of a team event where they've all got the same uniform and the same bag then you know hang one of these on there and then they don't get confused and put their things in somebody else's bag or vice versa they're just handy to have um, you know, use them as a as a spare key ring in your house for something. Um, lots and lots of different uses. Like I say, they don't just have to be a key ring. They can be a bag charm. They can be, you know, they can be some form of identification tag for your baggage or your luggage or your personal belongings. Anyway, I'm going to show you how to make them in Canvas Workspace for computer. And if you want to know how to do that, keep watching. Okay, so as I've, as I've just said, I'm using Canvas Workspace for computer. I've just had a quick look in the online version and I couldn't see a Varsity font. I thought there was one, but um, as I said, I've just had a quick look and I can't see one. So I'm using the download version because I've got one on my computer that I downloaded from Creative Fabrica and there'll be a link to it in the accompanying blog post over on my website. If you're watching this on my web on my website all the links will be in the accompanying blog post so the first thing I'm going to do is come over to the text icon and select that and I'm going to left click once on the page to get the text box and I'm going to type the letter A and hit enter I'm going to come up to the fonts at the top of the screen and I'm going to scroll down and look for my particular font 
project, which is called Varsity Team. And here it is on screen. So I'm going to come over to the right hand side to the edit tab. And in the height, I'm going to make it about 2.75 inches. This can be anything. It's entirely up to you. I'm just showing you how I made the ones that I've just shown you a few minutes ago. So because I've got maintain aspect ratio selected, when I made it 2.75 high, it made it 2.13 wide, which is about two and an eighth. With this now selected, I'm still under the edit tab. I'm going to scroll down to the bottom and I'm going to come to offset. I want to create an offset line around the outside only. I'm going to make sure I've got outward selected. I'm going to make sure I've got this tick that says create offset line around the outer edge. And I'm just going to take it down to 0 0.04 and show you something. And I'm just going to say OK. Now the offset is the one that's already always selected when you do the offset function. And then if you look at this with a 0 0.04 offset, it puts the split from this in the middle. If you cut this in vinyl, that means that this part of the design, when you stick the front and back together, will have this opening. So it will kind of be a bit flimsy. And I didn't like that. So I'm going to delete that. I'm going to come back to my original letter, back to offset, and I think I made my original 0 0.12, so I'm going to do that for now and just see if that works. I'm going to leave outward as the offset direction. I'm going to change the corner type to bevel because this is an angular font, so I want it more angular than round, and I'm going to leave this box selected and say OK. Again, the offset is the one that's selected. So now you can see there's no break here, there's no cut line, and that's what I want. If, if you, you know, are not bothered about this being a little bit flimsy because it would be separated, then you just do it how you want to. So I'm going to select the offset. I'm going to right click and make a duplicate. So there's my duplicate. And then I'm going to flip my duplicate vertically. So I'm going to still, I'm still under the editing tab. I'm going to come to where it says transform. You'll see it says flip. And I'm going to say vertically. And that turns it upside down. Now I want to add the bit in the middle where I put my key fob hardware. My key fob hardware is one inch wide. Now, again, I think I said in the introduction, the key fob hardware, the pliers that you use to apply to, you know, to apply the key fobs and the tassels are all linked in my Amazon favorites. So here on my Apple Lover 53 website, I think it's at the bottom. If you scroll to the bottom of the home homepage, you should see a blue box that says Amazon favorites. If you click on that, they'll be in the craft product section from memory okay so all the bits and pieces are used including the heat transfer vinyl will be in my amazon favorites so i want to join these together but i want a section to join them that will fit within my one inch wide hardware so i'm going to come over to the basic shapes and i'm just going to drag a square on again i'm still under the edit tab i'm going to make the square one inch OK, so it's one inch wide and one inch high. Now, my key fobs are about half an inch deep. So if I position this in the middle of my two letters, when this is folded in half, because this is an inch by an inch, it should give me an inch by half an inch, which means it will fit within to my hardware perfectly, as you saw at the beginning. So I'm just going to put that on one side. <clears throat> I'm going to select all three. And I'm going to come to align and center. I've got them pretty much centered there because it didn't move very much. But this one inch square now is central to this upside down A and this A that's the right way up. And they're all centered together. So the only thing I want to do now is just left click on the box. I'm not physically moving it. I'm just selecting it. And I'm just going to, using the arrow on my keyboard, I'm going to take it up. A little bit so it overlaps this A that's on the top a little bit more. You can see it's more overlapped down here than it is here. I'm just going to try and get it a little bit more central. I know I'm going to lose a little bit of the size when I weld it, but it's it's going to be near enough. So I've got my letter A out 
offset. I've got my letter, which I flip vertically offset, and I've got my one inch square all selected. I'm going to come down, still under the edit tab. Everything's been done under the edit tab. I'm going to come down to the bottom of the page where it says weld, and I'm going to weld it. So that's now created my shape. So when this is folded in half here, that will give me the base to put my heat transfer vinyl on. Now heat transfer vinyl, you cut in reverse. In other words, it has a shiny side and a dull side and you put the shiny side down on your mat. So I need to flip this or mirror it so it cuts correctly. This may well be symmetrical shape, but just in case, it's not, it's always best to mirror it. So I'm going to cut, select my original letter. I'm just going to scroll back up the page, still on the edit tab. And then under transform this time, I'm going to say flip horizontally. And when I select it, it looks as though nothing's happened. So it's probably a symmetrical shape. So I'm just going to change the outline on this one to red in the hope that you can see it better. And I'm going to sit it on there. So the overall size now is 6.90 inches high and 2.37 inches wide. So it's about two and three eighths wide and nearly seven high. So when this is folded in half, it'll be about three and a half high and about two and three eighths wide, which is like I showed you in the introduction. If you wanted to make this smaller or bigger, with everything selected here, you can either shrink it down or make it bigger, okay? So I'm just gonna undo so it comes back to the same size. So now, the way I did mine, I positioned my heat transfer vinyl layer, if you like, next to my vinyl layer. And then I cut a few on a page. So you saw in the introduction, I did, <coughs> I had an A, an S and an H. I also had an M and I just put them all on the page. And because we're using Canvas Workspace for computer, there's no download button like there is in the online version. So you have to go to the very top of your page where you'll see Brother Canvas Workspace and next to it, you should see file. And then you need to select the word file and you come down to where it says export transfer FCM. You'll either export it to your computer or a USB stick that you've got plugged into your computer you'll send it wirelessly directly over to your scan and cut machine if you've got a wi-fi enabled machine that you have set up with your scan and cut i'm not going to do that for now i'm just going to cancel it because i just want to show you something else so if you're doing a letter something like an h or an m so let me just come back to the text and let me just type a capital letter h and let me size this to 2.75 inches high. This one's not too bad because the gap is only small. So when you create your offset, this won't be a problem. But let me do a letter M and I'll show you what I encountered when I did my, my letter M. So again, I've got the M selected. In the height, I'm going to make it 2.75 wide and you'll see this gap here is quite wide so I'll get rid of the H. So again I've got my letter M 2.75 high and this is quite a wide letter in this font and as you can see it's over three inches wide so again if you wanted it to be narrower you could adjust it here at this stage but I'm going to leave it as it is for now and see if I can replicate what I encountered. So I'm going to come down to the offset I'm going to make it 0.12 outward bevel and only around the outside edge. And there's my offset. So I'm just going to move that to one side. So now this is my, my offset. I'm going to right click, duplicate. I'm going to flip it vertically. I'm going to get myself my one inch square. Just doing this bit quick, you can you know go back and refer to how I did it here. <clears throat> and make my one inch square. And now, if I can zoom in just on this section, you'll see that the one inch wide square that I need for my one inch wide key fob is too narrow to weld unless I bring it down here. I didn't necessarily 
want that look. So you've got options. You can either make your letter narrower to accommodate the one inch section that you're going to weld onto it for your key fob, or you can make your one inch wider, which will mean if we make, if I make this, let's just see, let's drag it out so it just overlaps a little bit. So width wise now it's about one and three eighths wide, which means when you use your one inch key fob, you'll have a little bit of vinyl showing on either side, which you know, me personally, I don't really mind. If you wanted to try and keep all the widths of your designs, you know, fairly consistent, then you would want to consider shrinking this down quite a bit to get it to be a very similar width to your other letters. And then again, you could just make this a one inch by one inch square and it should just about overlap. So what I would do is I'd get rid of everything, come back to the text. Sorry, I'm zoomed in. That's why my screen's jumping around. Select a letter M, make sure maintain aspect ratio selected, and then I'd make this 2.25. And then what you could do is just drag it down in its height to make it maybe about because the letters look differently when you're using obviously this style of font you never you're never going to get every single letter of the alphabet if you if you were making the whole alphabet in vinyl key rings you wouldn't get them all the identical size unless you manipulate them manually so let's take it to 275 so it's 2.75 in height by about two and a quarter wide. By the time we've added the offset, it will probably bring it to a similar height to this. So let's come down to offset. Let's make it outward 0 0.12, say OK. So there's my offset now, OK? Now again, you've got these little cutout bits here, but I think that would be OK if you wanted to make it completely flat select it, press on the dot to expose the nodes, just select those nodes and hit delete and you'll get a flat bottom, so to speak, so that then when this goes on it, that will be the look that you get. I probably would be inclined to do it like this. So I'm going to select it, right click, duplicate it. I'm going to flip the duplicate vertically and then I'm going to grab myself a square again and make it one inch and position this over and if I zoom in for you you'll see now it's it spans this gap bring this one down so it overlaps slightly select everything center and now you can see I've got a little overlap there and I've got a little overlap there where it'll all cut as one select everything come to the bottom and weld so now if I zoom back out and I make the original initial red, when that lines up on there, it all sits in nicely, the same as this, and I've got kind of similar consistent width and height. So that's just a way to deal with it. So the only thing I have to do now is select the letter that's going to be in the heat transfer vinyl and mirror it horizontally. Again, it didn't look as though anything happened, so it's likely that this is a very symmetrical shape. And then again, you know, you would just export it either onto a USB stick on your machine and then put that in your scan and cut machine or export it via Wi-Fi. And once you cut it out and layer up the vinyl, then you would just glue it together. <clears throat> and then once it's, I would put it under something heavy. Um, I put mine under like a big bag of sugar or if you if you've got a heat press and it's and it's obviously cold sit your heat press on it or your easy press or something like that just you know leave it for a couple of hours to let the glue set and it will make the key fob you know nice and sturdy and then you've just got to add your hardware and as i said at the beginning of the video the flip-flop video which should be on my youtube channel by the time this one comes out 
shows you the process of layering up the heat transfer vinyl onto the vinyl faux leather fabric and it shows you how I glued them together. The only difference with the flip-flop one was that I used a split ring so I had to put that on before I glued the two parts together. With this one you'll just glue it together, wait for it to be fully dry and then apply your key fob hardware. So that was today's video. I hope it was helpful. I hope you've learned something. Please leave me a comment underneath the YouTube video letting me know whether you've done this or whether you'll try it. I think these are great for, as I said at the beginning, you know, just for putting onto your luggage or your bags for identification, but I also think they're great to give as teachers for gifts. That's it for today and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.